truth seekers, and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. Alrighty now, folks, grab your teacups and settle in, because we've got a scandal that's more outrageous than the Queen's corgis in tiaras. It seems our favorite attention-seeking duchess, Meghan Markle, is at it again. And this time, she's dragging poor little Archie into her web of delusion. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So, now, before we dive into this piping hot tea, let's take a moment to appreciate the sheer audacity of it all, shall we? Here we have Megan, who spent the last few years playing hide-and-seek with her children faster than you can say photo-op, suddenly claiming that Archie has a special connection with, wait for it, trees. Oh, the dramatics. According to the Cut interview, and honestly, who can keep track of all her interviews at this point, Megan claims that little Archie greets a pair of palm trees in their Montecito garden every day. Now, isn't that just precious? It's almost as if she's trying to create some sort of magical connection between Archie and his royal grandfather, King Charles, who's known for his love of plants and trees. But here's the kicker, folks. We've seen about as much proof of Archie's existence as we have of the Loch Ness Monster. For all we know, these conversations with trees could be Megan talking to herself in the garden, probably rehearsing her next victim speech for Oprah. Now I know what some of you Sussex Squad members out there are thinking, but Megan's just protecting her children's privacy. Oh please, spare me the sanctimonious spiel. There's protecting privacy, and then there's creating an entire imaginary life for your supposedly real children. And our dear Megan seems to be leaning heavily towards the latter. Let's break this down, shall we? We've got Megan, who's more camera hungry than a Kardashian at a red carpet event, suddenly becoming coy about showing her children to the world. We've got Harry, who used to be more than happy to share details about his life, now clammed up tighter than an oyster at low tide. And we've got these mysterious children, who seem to pop up in conversation whenever Megan needs a sympathy boost or a new headline. It's all very convenient, isn't it? Almost as if these children are more useful as PR tools than as, you know, actual human beings. But here's the thing that really gets my goat. While Megan's busy spinning fairy tales about Archie's arboreal adventures, what's happening in the real world? Well, we've got King Charles, who's barely had a chance to bond with his grandchildren because they're kept hidden away in Montecito like some sort of royal state secret. We've got William and Kate's children, who are out there in the public eye, showing what real royal children look like. And we've got the rest of the royal family carrying on with their duties and responsibilities while Harry and Meghan play make-believe in California. It's enough to make you want to shake some sense into them. But of course, that would require them to actually show up in person, which seems about as likely as the Queen coming back to life and doing the Macarena. Now, let's talk about this supposed special connection between Archie and King Charles. Meghan would have us believe that Archie's tree-talking habits are some sort of genetic royal trait, passed down from his green-thumbed grandfather. How convenient! It's almost as if she's trying to create a bond where there isn't one, to remind everyone that yes, her children are still technically royal, even if they're about as visible as Harry's common sense these days. But here's the rub. King Charles's love of nature is well documented. He's been talking to plants and shaking hands with trees for years. It's quirky, sure, but it's genuine. It's part of who he is. Meghan's story about Archie, on the other hand, it feels about as authentic as her attempt at a British accent. And let's not forget, this is the same Meghan who claimed she knew nothing about the royal family before marrying Harry. The same Meghan who spent the last few years trashing the very institution she's now trying to associate her son with. The hypocrisy is enough to make your head spin faster than Meghan can say, my truth. But you know what? Maybe we're all being too harsh. Maybe Archie really does talk to trees. Maybe Lilibet is fluent in flower. Maybe there's a whole secret garden of chatty plants in Montecito that only the Sussex children can communicate with. It would certainly explain why we never see them. They're too busy having deep philosophical discussions with the local flora. Oh, who am I kidding? This is classic Megan behavior. When the spotlight starts to dim, when the public interest starts to wane, she pulls out the kid card. It's like clockwork. Need to distract from a PR disaster? Mention the kids. Want to remind everyone you're still technically royal? Bring up the kids. Trying to emotionally blackmail your father-in-law? Kids, kids, kids. It's manipulative, it's transparent, and quite frankly, it's getting old. We've all seen this play before, Megan. 
It's time for a new act. But here's the real tragedy in all this. While Megan's busy crafting fairy tales about her children's supposed habits, she's depriving them of real relationships with their family. King Charles, Prince William, Princess Kate, these are people who could offer Archie and Lilibet a connection to their heritage, a sense of who they are and where they come from. Instead, they're being used as pawns in Meghan's never-ending game of chess against the royal family. And let's not forget Harry in all this. Our ginger prince, once the cheeky spark of the royal family, now reduced to a nodding sidekick in Meghan's one-woman show. Does he really believe all this nonsense about talking trees? Or is he too far gone, too caught up in Meghan's web of delusion to see the truth? It's a far cry from the Harry we used to know and love, isn't it? The Harry who was always up for a laugh, who had a genuine connection with people, who seemed to understand the importance of family. Now he's just... what? A silent partner in Meghan's fantasy world? A human prop in her carefully constructed narrative? It's sad, really. But you know what's even sadder? The fact that there are people out there who actually believe this rubbish. Who lap up every word Meghan says as if it's gospel truth who defend her to the hilt, no matter how outrageous her claims become. It's like watching a cult in action, and Megan's the charismatic leader, spinning tales of talking trees and invisible children. And meanwhile, what are the real royals doing? Oh, you know, just carrying on with their duties, serving the public, behaving with actual grace and dignity. William and Kate are raising their children in the public eye, showing the world what real royal parenting looks like. King Charles is getting on with the business of being monarch, despite the family drama swirling around him. Even Princess Anne, bless her, is still out there doing engagements with the energy of someone half her age. That's the difference, you see. While Meghan's busy crafting fairy tales and playing hide-and-seek with her children, the rest of the royal family is living in the real world. They understand that being royal isn't about creating magical narratives or playing the victim. It's about service, about duty, about putting the needs of others before your own. It's a lesson Megan clearly never learned. Or if she did, she's chosen to ignore it in favor of her own selfish pursuits. And now, she's dragging her children, whether they exist in the flesh or just in her imagination, into her games. But here's the thing, Megan. The public isn't stupid. We can see through your act. We can spot a tall tale when we hear one. And this story about Archie and the talking trees? It's about as believable as your claim that you didn't know who Prince Harry was before you met him. So here's some free advice, Megan. Not that you'll take it. If you want people to believe your stories about your children, maybe try showing them to the world once in a while. If you want to create a connection with the royal family, try reaching out to them instead of using them as plot points in your personal soap opera. And if you want to be taken seriously as a public figure, try dealing in truth instead of fantasy. But who am I kidding? This is Meghan Markle we're talking about. The woman who's never met a story she couldn't embellish or a situation she couldn't dramatize. No, I suspect we're in for more of the same. More tall tales, more invisible children, more attempts to pull at the heartstrings of a public that's growing increasingly weary of her antics. And Harry? Oh, Harry. If you've got any of that old spark left, any of that common sense that used to serve you so well, now's the time to use it. Stand up to your wife. Stand up for your children, if they exist. Be the father and the prince we all thought you could be, instead of the silent partner in Meghan's fantasies. But I won't hold my breath. Because the sad truth is, the Harry and Meghan story is starting to look less like a fairy tale and more like a cautionary tale. A reminder of what happens when you believe your own hype. When you put fame and fortune above family and duty, when you forget the very people you're supposed to be serving. So there you have it, folks. The latest chapter in the saga of Meghan Markle, The Duchess of Delusion. It's not pretty, it's not dignified, but it sure is entertaining. And isn't that what Meghan's become now? Not a royal, not a humanitarian, just another celebrity spinning tales for attention. Until then, my fellow royal watchers, keep your eyes peeled, your ears open, and your skepticism firmly in place. Because in the world of royal watching, the truth is often stranger than fiction. And the fiction is pretty darn strange to begin with. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.